The world's largest installation for capturing CO2 from the air has been launched. The world's largest plant to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere has been launched in Iceland. Orca. Because this is the name of the installation, can suck 4,000 tons of CO2 from the air each year and inject it deep into the ground for mineralization, contributing to mitigating the effects of climate change. About 40 kilometers southeast of Iceland's capital, Reykjavik, the largest carbon capture facility to date has come into operation. The installation was named Orca, from the Icelandic word, Orca, meaning, energy. It was built by the Swiss startup Climeworks and the Icelandic company Carbfix. Working at full speed, Orca is expected to collect 4,000 from the air every year. Tons of carbon dioxide, which, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, corresponds to the emissions of about 870 cars. This is not much, considering that last year's global emissions amounted to 31.5 billion tons. Despite this, Orca is the largest object of this type in the world. The construction cost of the installation amounted to approximately 15 million United States dollars. As the authors of the project admitted, Orca will take the removal of carbon dioxide from the air to the next level, combining the technology of direct capture of CO2 from the atmosphere with its underground storage. Supporters of the project believe that such technologies can become the main tool in the fight against climate change. But critics say the technology is still too costly and it could be decades before it becomes operational on a large scale. To collect carbon dioxide from the air, the plant uses 12 fans that draw air into eight collectors, somewhat like large containers. Inside them is a highly selective filter material that traps carbon dioxide. After the filter material is saturated with carbon dioxide, the collector is closed. Then the temperature inside it is raised to 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. This releases carbon dioxide from the filter material. In the next step, highly concentrated CO2 is mixed with water and then pumped into a previously prepared well to a depth of about 1,000 meters. There it reacts with basalt rocks and mineralizes within a few years. The rock remains. In this way, carbon dioxide is removed from the air and returned to the ground in a sustainable and safe way. Thanks to our solution, we can measure exactly how much carbon dioxide has been removed and turned into stone. Direct capture of air also means that CO2 can be used as a feedstock in many useful applications. Our machines consist of modular CO2 collectors that can be stacked to build installations of any size. Machines for direct capture of carbon dioxide from the air are powered only by renewable energy or energy from waste. Scientific research shows that reducing global CO2 emissions is not enough to effectively combat global warming. It must also be removed from the atmosphere. Experts from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, talked about this in their report. By mid-century, 10 billion tons of carbon dioxide will have to be removed from the air every year. One of the solutions that can help achieve this goal are installations similar to the one just launched in Iceland. The plant built by Climeworks and Carbfix is not the first installation to capture CO2 from the air. There are already a dozen other pilot projects in operation around the world but they are much smaller and absorb less carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than the orca plant. Doctors implanted a woman with an ear printed from her own cells.
Surgeons reconstructed the ear of a woman suffering from microtia using a 3D printed implant. The implant was created from cartilage cells previously collected from the patient, grown in the laboratory and implanted together with a biodegradable coating that provides protection. This is a major advance in the field of regenerative medicine. Surgeons implanted an outer ear implant grown from her own cells in a woman suffering from microtia. Microtia is a congenital defect consisting in the deformation or complete absence of the auricles. People affected by this condition, if they do not have other diseases, can develop normally and lead healthy lives, although they may have self-esteem problems and suffer, especially in childhood, because of their appearance. Developed by scientists from 3D Biotherapeutics, the procedure can significantly improve the lives of people affected by microtia. This approach could also lead to a new generation of implants of other body parts created from the patient's cells, treatment of injuries, reconstructive and regenerative therapy, and possibly even the biomanufacturing of whole organs. The operation was performed as part of an early-stage clinical trial to assess the safety of the implant in people with microtia. The study involves 11 people and is being conducted in California and Texas in the U.S. The transplant was performed in the U.S. in March. The patient was a 20-year-old woman from Mexico who was born with a small and misshapen right ear. Details about the implant and the procedure have not yet been made available. 3D Biotherapeutics was founded in 2014 by scientists associated with Cornell University and Columbia University. The platform they developed consists of a whole set of technologies and processes that support 3D printing of biocomponents. It was this set of tools that the researchers used when implanting a new ear in a 20-year-old Mexican woman. Currently, there are two ways to treat microtia. The first involves surgically removing rib cartilage from the patient, shaping it into the shape of an ear, and then creating a skin pocket on the side of the patient's head to hold the new ear. The second approach uses plastic implants, usually made of porous polyethylene, which are implanted in a similar manner. The new 3D bioprinting platform offers patients one more solution, with an implant made from their own cells. The researchers first performed a biopsy to collect chondrocytes, cartilage cells. Then, they multiplied them in a special cell culture system, and then mixed them with kernel vivo bioink, created on the basis of collagen. In the next step, they used a 3D printer to print an ear implant in a size and shape that matched the opposite ear, as determined by an ear scan. The implant was then implanted under the patient's skin surrounded by a temporary biodegradable coating that provides protection and structural support but is expected to be absorbed by the patient's body over time. The implanted ear is supposed to mature over time, taking on the natural look and flexibility of a normal ear. The ear reconstruction was performed by Dr. Arturo Bonilla at the Microtia Congenital Ear Deformity Institute in San Antonio, Texas. The second clinical research center is Cedars Sinai in Los Angeles, led by Dr. John Reinisch. As a doctor who has treated thousands of children with microtia around the world, I am inspired by what this technology can mean for affected patients and their families, said Bonilla. Adding that he hopes the new implants will replace current treatments for microtia. Often, with innovative technologies, it takes some time to overcome basic technical obstacles. Then there is rapid progress. We've seen it in aviation, IT and many other fields. Now that we believe we've overcome the fundamental hurdles, 
Our technology platform has the potential to make a huge difference in patients' lives and be the beginning of a new treatment paradigm, said Dan Cohen, co-founder of 3D Biotherapeutics. 3D printed implants from the patient's cells can also be used in other cartilage-related diseases, in the case of nasal defects or injuries, in breast reconstruction or meniscus damage in the knee. Dogs can recognize human intentions. New research suggests that dogs, at least to some extent, appear to be able to judge whether human actions are intentional or accidental. This, in turn, indicates that quadrupeds can be attributed to at least one aspect of the theory of mind, the ability to recognize intention in action. Over our long history together, dogs have developed a number of bonding skills with humans. Their ability to understand human actions, demonstrated by following commands or imitating human behavior, is just one such skill. But do dogs understand human intentions? It remained unclear. The ability to recognize other people's intentions, or at least to understand them, is an essential component of a theory of mind or a theory of mental mechanism, that is, the ability to understand other beings simply by realizing that they too have minds with which they can perceive the world differently and have a different opinion about it. Knowledge. This allows you to take someone else's perspective, understand the intentions of other beings. Children acquire the tenets of theory of mind around the age of five. Only that so far this ability was attributed only to people. Can dogs do it too? Recognizing whether a person is doing something intentionally or by accident seems to confirm it. Research results of scientists from the Institute of Human History Science Max Planck published in the journal Scientific Reports. To see if dogs can tell the difference between intentional and unintentional action, a team of researchers in Germany conducted an interesting experiment that examined how dogs, after following various commands, reacted when food rewards were withheld, both intentionally and unintentionally. Interestingly, the dogs responded differently depending on whether the experimenters' actions were intentional or unintentional. This, the researchers say, shows that dogs can tell the difference between actions that were done intentionally or accidentally. 51 dogs took part in the experiment. The team tested whether the dogs would react differently to a human who intentionally or unintentionally denied them a reward. During the tests, the quadrupeds were separated from humans by a transparent barrier. Each dog was tested under three conditions. The basic situation was that the experimenter fed the dog pieces of dog food through a slit in the shutter. In the purposeful action scenario, the experimenter would suddenly withdraw the reward through a crack in the barrier and place it in front of him. In a scenario that the researchers described as clumsiness, the experimenter brought the reward to a crack in the septum and wanted to give it to the dog, but accidentally dropped it. In the last scenario called blocking, the human tried again to give the dog a reward, but was unable to get it through the blocked gap in the partition. In each of the described scenarios, the reward remained with the experimenter. If dogs are indeed able to attribute intentions to humans in action, we would expect them to show different responses in the intentional action scenario compared to the two scenarios called clumsy and blocking. As it turns out, that's exactly what we've observed, says Dr. Julianne Brower. The researchers measured the time the dogs waited before approaching the denied reward. They predicted that if dogs were able to identify human intentions, they would wait longer before approaching a transparent barrier that contained a reward along with an experimenter who refused to give it to them. 
The waiting time was longer than when the person supposedly accidentally dropped the food in front of the barrier and when the gap in the partition seemed to be blocked. What's more, in the case of intentional action, dogs not only waited longer, but also sat or lay down more often. Actions often interpreted as behaviors intended to calm a person. They also stopped wagging their tails. The dogs in our study clearly behaved differently depending on whether the actions of the human experimenter were intentional or unintentional, says Britta Schooneman, first author of the study. This suggests that dogs may indeed be able to identify human intentions, adds Hannes Rakocci of the University of Göttingen. The team acknowledges that their findings may be met with skepticism and that further research is needed to address alternative explanations, such as behavioral cues from experimenters or knowledge transfer from prior dog training. Nevertheless, the findings provide important preliminary evidence that dogs can be attributed to at least one aspect of theory of mind, the ability to recognize intention in action.